to Stan the White Man TV. I'm your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Um, Seahawks have a bye week this week. As promised, I'm doing Smoking Loon. The reason I'm doing this is my buddy Matthew brought a um, sample of the Smoking Loon Red Blend, and I was actually very impressed at the quality of that one. I can remember when Smoking Loon first came on the scene. Oh, it had to, I don't know how long ago that was. And uh, they had the, you know, the duck on the front. Pretty prominent duck. It actually reminded me a little bit of a duck horns decoy picture. But a little darker, kind of like a postage stamp. And it had a duck with a cigar in its mouth. And they changed it. I'm, I'm sure there's some animal activist group out there that thought that was like, uh, you know, not a good thing to do. I don't know. I didn't really research it. But all of these run at like ten and a half bucks. Uh, great value. I remember when they first got it, came out, I was just excited about the quality of the wines, how good they were for the money. Um, just excellent wines, I thought. The red blend is really good. It's not going to be on this program. Uh, I have it featured down at the store. Um, good wine, uh, really. And, and what happens with uh, brands like Smoking Loom, Pepperwood Grove, Pepperwood, Pepperwood Grove? Yeah, Pepperwood Grove. Um, Sebastiani. Uh, Gallo, uh, Woodbridge, uh, just all those, um, Liberty School, all those wines, they kind of uh, develop this what we call a grocery store label where you see it in all the Safeways, Hagen's, uh, Albertson's, well, Albertson's was bought out by somebody. Anyway, um, I think, yeah, anyway, I don't see those stores up here. You know, I do, I do go to America a lot. But anyway, you know, just the mainland, you know, chain stores. And what happens with that, and, and this is a bad thing for you as a consumer, is you start looking down on those wines. Like, ah, that's just an average wine. I can buy that anywhere. I can buy it at Costco, whatever the deal is. And, uh, you know, sometimes you miss out on some really good wines. So let's get started right away. These are all ten and a half bucks or $9.99, depending on what store you go to, uh, $10, $11. This is uh, 2013, the original uh, Smoking Loon Merlot. Now they still have the duck, and now they've changed back to the duck with the cigar in his mouth, but it's very, you know, kind of masked in this really cool, kind of cool picture. I'll show you a picture of the label. This is from Chile. Very common now, these wineries are getting their juice from Chile, Argentina. So, you know, well, yeah, they're out of the United States, but this is a Chilean Merlot. There you go. By the way, they used to, remember when they used to think that Carmenere was Merlot? So this is really Merlot. It's not Carmenere. We've gotten past that era. Let's see what we get on the nose. Kind of a like a green, like I just stuck my nose in a bunch of blackberry bushes. Not very, uh, not hugely aromatic. I'm getting some uh, cherry notes coming through. The initial attack was like it really, like you just stuck your nose in a bunch of like blackberries and alder branches and you know like a big mess of bushes. Still there, cherries, I get a little tobacco coming through. A little bit of bark action. Interesting nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice cherry and currant fruit on this wine, and this is, impresses me as much as the red blend in the in the fact that sometimes you get these inexpensive wines, and they get a little bit of that makeup on them. You can tell there's stuff going on in that wine. It just doesn't seem like real wine. This is real wine on the palate. A lot of like dark cherries, currants coming through. I like that um, 
well, as they say in song class, perazine. I like the, uh, the, like the branchiness, the, uh, the herbaceousness that comes through on the finish. It's very interesting. But it's not overpowering, so, you know, for a lot of you, you won't, like, it won't be off-putting. A lot of people don't like that. You go to the Wild Valley, Chinon, uh, Cap Franc can be very salad, vegetal. This has just a little bit of that coming through, a little bit of a, like, blackberry branches, uh, stems. Don't, don't bite on those. Watch out for the thorns. Interesting wine. Ten and a half bucks, nine bucks, ten bucks. Let's call it ten bucks. Let's just say ten bucks. It's a good wine. Not super complex, but it's interesting. It's got that herbaceous vegetal thing going on right on the backside. Good fruit. A little bit thin on the back end. I'm going to go B minus, a C plus B minus on that. Good bottle of wine. I mean, if you're looking for Merlot, you just want an easy to drink Merlot, I'm going to have to bring this in. You heard that, Matthew. I'm going to bring this into the store because I think this is a good value Merlot. It's one of those wines you say, well, yeah, you know, for that price you're getting, it delivers. Let's move on. This is the uh, original Smoking Loon Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a 14. I think this was a 13. Just goes to show you that Cab sells quicker than Merlot. It's kind of sad because, well, you know, this is from Chile. I was a little concerned it was from Central Coast, California. Merlot doesn't usually deliver from that area of California. They probably shouldn't even make it down there, in my opinion. So this, let's see where this is from. This is also from Chile. Interesting. Now, I didn't look into this, but they, they can do this in a couple of different ways. They can actually uh, have a cooperative down in uh, Chile, a winery that will actually make the wine for them. They go down, they, they um, supervise the process, they make sure they do it the way they want to do it, and then, you know, it's a contract deal, and then they ship it up to the U.S. They can also put it in bladders and bring it, the juice up and do the blending up here. It just depends on how they do it. I don't know how they do it, but those are possibilities um, I would think more than likely um, that they probably have a contract with the winery down in Chile. They do, they supervise it, they make it for them, and they ship the bottles up here. Not exactly sure, not 100%, not even 10% not even sure, but that's probably the way it's done. Uh, you know, labor is cheaper down there, things are cheaper down there, so they can do this. This is $10. Let's see what we get on the nose. Once again, you get that kind of leafy vegetal thing on the nose. And getting a little brown sugar element, which kind of scares me just a little bit. A little bit of bark action on this and currants. Let's see what we get on the palate. Once again, I'm impressed, uh, more vegetal than the Merlot actually, but still, with the, it has enough of that, almost like a, it's going into the raisin category, that maybe that's where I got the brown sugar on the nose, has a little bit of that raisin quality, not a lot, um, really solid fruit, has a little bit of acid, you know, it's got some stuff going on, um, yeah. grip on the back side, no makeup. That the, the quality of the fruit is coming through enough that it, it's actually ripe cab. I mean it's a, a riper style cab. It doesn't go over the top fruit. It's kind of cool. I mean, you know, like I said, it's not super complex, but it has some interesting flavors. This is a good little like sit around, you know, quaffing cab, you know, you're having company over, you're playing cards. You're doing something, you're playing Monopoly, whatever you do. You're watching your favorite movie, what, you're watching your favorite series, maybe you're watching The Walking Dead. Um, you know, this is a great party wine. I mean, just really solid, seamless, easy to drink, nice flavors, like this wine a lot. I'm going to go straight up B-minus on this. 
It's got the, the, the finish is still lingering. I'm impressed. Good job. Let's move on. The original Smoking Loon Old Vine Zin 2013, not from Chile, it's California, just straight up California. This uh, Smoking Loon uh, claim uh, is out of Napa. I keep wanting to think it's part of Sebastiani, but I'm not sure. I don't think it is. Now, I did a Zins episode. The last episode was Zin. These were big Zins. I'm curious about this one. I'm kind of a Zin, not a snob. I wouldn't say I'm a Zin snob. I love Zin. So I'm not a snob. I like all Zins. Especially, I found some really good and expensive Zin. Montoya comes to mind. Let's see what we get on those. A little petrol. A little rubber boot action going on. A little beach ball with a little bit of a currents coming through. A little bit of a bark action. It's a little muted. Not... Nothing really pops out. I get a little currants and blackberries coming through. A little earthy. It reminds me of like, you know, bark laying on the ground, you know, like you run across that old uh, tree that fell down a long time ago and it's really dry outside. You get that kind of smell coming through. Ah, there's a little bit of raisin action on the backside. I was kind of wondering when that was going to come through. There we go. Let's see what we get on the palette. dimensional actually uh, it's not really doing anything for me it's kind of just there I mean it's there but okay wait for something to happen and it's not happening it's like you know turning on your uh, TV and it just gets stuck on the screen because your satellite's not working nothing's happening it's just stuck Get a little petrol. Definitely get that kind of rubber boot petrol thing right up front. There's fruit. Don't get me wrong. This has got fruit. It has fruit. I get a little ran black raspberry currants for sure. But what I'm saying is it doesn't do anything. It just kind of monotone, you know. It doesn't do... No, that's not... It doesn't do anything. It just kind of sits on your palate. You just taste the same flavor from front to back. There's nothing really interesting about it. The flavors do linger, but it just kind of is the same thing that when it started. There's not really a lot going on. It's just kind of boring. But I think some people might like it because it does have some black currants. Yeah, I mean, that's what... That was come to mind. It's like, there. You know what I'm saying? You get the picture? I'm going to go see. I think it's an average Zinfandel. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it, um, you know, it's just, it's just average. Um, I think for 10, I think for a nine, if, if it's, if you can get it for 10 bucks, you know, if you're not, if you don't really care, if you have some people over, they don't really drink wine, you just want something that's going to be good. That's okay. It's good wine. It's average. Thanks for watching. You keep watching and I'll Keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.